All right, I am laying out my refined storyboard. I have saved it as a new file. And I want to rename that file, not the stage anymore. I want to save it as refined storyboard. All right, so I'm missing my bottom three frames. And in those three frames, I want the hand to kind of let go. And I want the pizza to continue. So let's see, they're going to show up in the middle here. So frame nine is going to be my next frame. And then the hand starts to depart. And then, yeah, then the hand just goes away. So it actually, as it happens, that's my refined storyboard. It shows a transformation, right? It shows a transformation of the character. It shows the introduction of this hand character, though that doesn't transform. And it also shows, in some ways, a transformation of the setting because this pizza, start, this pizza sun starts to appear and starts to set by the end. Do not have your first frame of your refined storyboard be identical to your last frame. That is redundant, right? Mine look pretty identical, except that this, the pizza sun is there. <laughs> and I could have the last frame be this instead. It doesn't really matter. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to save it. That's my refined storyboard, not my stage. And I'm going to say, save a copy as a JPEG. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Now, remember, this is 30 by 40 inches, and we're doing 150 pixels per inch. The reason we do that is if I uncheck resample and I print this not on a 30 by 40 piece of paper, but on an eight by 10 piece of paper, the resolution is almost 600. So this, this refined storyboard can be printed pretty large. If you want to print your animation, a lot of students will print it at 11 by 14. And it will be plenty big enough for print resolution. That's all with the same native pixels. So that's why we do 30 by 40 at a lower resolution. All right. Now I can close it and I can go back to my stage file. This is just an extra. Remember my stage, I need the timeline to play it. But this is opening my stage, not opening my GIF file. You can also open your GIF file in Photoshop. What's the difference? Your stage file has millions of colors, whereas your GIF file will only have 256 pixel colors. A nice option, we've already made the frame by frame. Photoshop is actually very good, especially for those in social media marketing. You don't use a lot of GIFs on social media, right? You use GIFs on websites. On social media, you use MP4 files, you use video files. So once you're done with your GIF, you can click at the bottom of your timeline window and convert this back to a video timeline and it will already all be, all be programmed, then go to your, your timeline window options and say render video. And that will make an MP4, just keep all the defaults, but save it to a place you see. So mine's gonna save into my assignment, four, assignment three folder. It's gonna render it fairly quickly, because these computers are really powerful, into a MP4. And the reason we don't post MP4s is they're a whole lot bigger and they don't automatically loop, right? But you can set them to loop. But this is now a video quality file with millions of colors, right? Question. Yes. So setting up for the layout is complicated. And so I'm going to walk you guys through it. And then that will be the end of this video. And then I can always help you guys individually, right? And I always have lab hours. And as long as you get something turned in by 11.59 tonight for this assignment, you have the option to get full credit for it. 
right, by the end of the semester. So it does not all need to be done in one day. Yeah, I just need something. It's not good. Yeah, exactly. Get something submitted. It's so one. It's your first draft. It's your first draft. All right. So let's let's go back to the beginning here. We're going to go from your stage file, and now we're going to set up your refined storyboard. So I'm going to go back to where we had it as time frame, right? And our animation, it played through the way we wanted. The first step was to clean up your frames. So to do that, these were called layers, you know? <laughs> to change your layers into frames, you click on your timeline and you say, flatten frames into layers. So once your animation's done, you've outputted your GIF, then you go to the timeline window, you click on the window options, and you say flatten frames into layers. Okay. It's going to give you a new stack of frames on top of your existing layers. You find your, your layers underneath that. Right? So it's going to be underneath frame one. You're going to select it, just like I'm doing in the video. You're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, hold down shift, and delete all of those. Yours are going to say layers, not frame, because I'm repeating something I've already done. So all that's left are your numbered frames that correspond exactly to what you did in your timeline. For Cam, for you, that's important because you had more frames than layers, right? Because we added transitions and we, you know. So now every, every frame is a layer. Every frame is a layer. It's like a flip book. Once you've done that, you can click on all of your frames in the timeline and trash them. You need to do that because now we're going to mess with your layers, right? And it's a good time to save it. So file, save your stage. Because now it's really, really easy to output an animation again because you just set the timing because now all the frames are in the right order. So that's my animation super fast. All right. So once you've trashed all your frames in your stage, now it's time to save it with a new name. So we're going to save it as not your stage, but your refined storyboard. And I'm happy to help you with this individually outside of class time. I'm going to save it to the desktop as my refined storyboard as a Photoshop file. You want to see that name change up here so you're not overwriting your animation. And now we have to choose the nine best frames from our animation to make into a refined storyboard. But first we have, a, have to have a place to put them. So I'm going to close the timeline window and I'm going to grow my canvas size behind my 8x8 eight eight image. So I'm going to go to image canvas size and I'm going to grow the space to be 30 inches by 40 inches. Right? It's helpful to have your guides around your frame. You can do that at any time. But you see how I have those guides framing it? That's helpful. Now I'm going to go to my very bottom layer and I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm going to fill it with white. Edit fill with white. And now it's like I have a stack of animation cards like my flipbook. All frames of it stacked in the middle of a table. Then I'm going to turn on my, my guides which is view show guides. Not gr guides, sorry, grid which is command apostrophe. You can toggle it on and off. And because we sized it and formatted it correctly, you can see in your rulers that they're, you're going to go one inch from each side. So from 19 to 20, from 16 to 15, from 11 to 10, and from 24 to 25. Then I can turn off my grid with command apostrophe. And this gives me a nice layout to snap to for all my cards. So if I turn on auto select layer and turn on my my deck of cards here, it's like I'm I'm dealing at a table at Vegas. And I'm just gonna go one, 
two, three. It will snap to my guides. Four, five, six, seven, eight. The problem is those aren't the nine I want, right? So then you go through your stack and you figure out what's your middle frame going to be. You know, what's the one that, that kind of tells the story? And you put that in the middle and then you put the others around it. And then you save it as a PSD file, you save it as a JPEG, you upload the JPEG. I know it feels rushed, always does on submission day, right? And it's in the video, and I'm here to help you. And people usually need help when they're introduced to layout, because it's easy to make mistakes. So I don't want to edit that, what am I doing? All right, so I'm going to upload my JPEG that I saved of my refined storyboard. And then I've got all the components. And we don't have time to do the, the presentation critique today. But I'm going to answer that question just to preview it for you. The presentation critique question is, do you think your transformation shows better in your GIF or in your refined storyboard? So one's like a comic book and one's like uh, an animated movie, right? Really short. So let's look at them. I can tell the transformation pretty clearly in the animation. Movement's really easy to track with your eye. I can certainly see the, the movement of the pizza. In the refined storyboard, I can really clearly see the movement of the hand and the movement of the character's head. The pizza, I really don't catch as easily. So subtlety shows up in time-based media way better than it does in still media, if that makes sense. But I think they both showcase a transformation. So they, they are both successful. What would I use this for? I would use this in a print portfolio to show that I understand animation principles. But animation speaks for itself in animation. You just can't print it. You know, you can only show it on screens. All right.